All right, I'm going to do problem 15 and 25 for you in this video here. Problem 15 I didn't write out, but this is we're going to draw it here. It says a 10,000 kilogram railroad car. So this is our railroad car. And it has a mass of 10,000 kilograms. And it's rolling along at 2 meters per second. Okay, and while it's rolling along, they're going to drop in here. 4,000 kilograms of gravel is going to fall into the back. And then they want to find out what is the final speed after you've dropped the gravel into the truck or into the railroad car. So, we have an initial velocity, we have an initial momentum. So we're going to say the initial momentum is equal to final momentum. We know the momentum is conserved. In this case, the move, movement is this way, so the gravel has no momentum in this direction. So the only momentum is the car. So we're going to do the mass of the train car times its initial velocity. Now, when the gravel falls in, they stick together. So this is a, an inelastic collision. So then we're going to have that the final velocity is going to be equal to the mass of the car plus the mass of the gravel. And we want to solve this for the final velocity, so we're just going to divide by that. We're going to get the final velocity is just equal to the mass of the car times the velocity initial divided by the sum of the two masses. And we can plug those numbers in because we have them. We have 10,000 times the initial velocity, which is 2 meters per second over the sum of it, which is 10,000 plus 4,000. And what you do get, you get the final velocity is equal to 1.43 meters per second. All right. Very simple problem, but it shows the steps. Set up the initial momentum equals the final momentum, and then figure out what kind of situation it is. In this case, it was an inelastic collision. So that's how I set up the problem. All right. Let's look at 25. 25 is a much uh, trickier problem. You've got to think about it, okay? What happens is we have a box M that is sliding down this curved ramp. And it's going to collide with another box that's twice the mass of the initial one. We know that this is 3 meters high, and it slides down the ramp, and then it hits. And then we have two different cases. In case A, when the box M hits the box 2M, they stick together, and we want to figure out what the final velocity is. So on the first part, this is technically an inelastic collision. Because they're going to stick together. So then this becomes M1 V1 initial is equal to V final times M1 plus M2. That's the from our equation for inelastic collision. However, we're not given the initial velocity here. The initial velocity has to be velocity right before the collision. So right when this comes down here, right before it collides, we need to know what its velocity is at this point. That will be its initial velocity for the collision. But we know from chapter 10 that if the block is sliding down a ramp, energy is conserved right before it hits the collision. So let's do this as an energy problem. And this is just going to be gravitational potential, mgh, and it's going to become equal to 1 half mv squared right at the bottom. So this velocity from the energy is going to tell us what the initial velocity is right before the collision. So notice the mass is canceled. I can solve this for v, and v is equal to the square root of 2gh. So I'm going to plug that in. That's the square root of 2 times 9.8 times 3. I'm going to get what the initial velocity of that boxes right before the collision. And when I do that, I get that the initial velocity is equal to 2.56 meters per second. No, I'm sorry, 7.67 meters per second. So this becomes the initial velocity of the box right before the collision. So that has to go back into here. So now we're going to do this part. So I'm going to do M1 times V initial is equal to the V final times M1 plus M2. Okay. Again, I'm going to solve this for V final. So V final is just going to be equal to M1 V1 initial 
over m1 plus m2. And then when I do that, I can now look at this and say, oh, they never give me what the mass was, but I do know that this is m over m plus 2m, because this m2 is exactly twice the mass of that, all that times the v1 initial. Well, that becomes equal to m over 3m times v1 initial, and the m's cancel, or you get the v final is just v1 initial divided by 3, which is equal to 7.67 divided by 3, which is equal to 2.56 meters per second. So this is the answer to part A, when they hit and stick together. All right, let's do part B over here. In part B it says, when it hits, there's an elastic collision, and we want to know to what height does mass M rebound. But remember, whenever we have an elastic collision, we're gonna use those elastic collision equations, and we don't care about how fast block 2M is moving this way. We're only caring about block M, and since block M is smaller than 2M, it's actually going to bounce backwards in an elastic collision. So we're gonna use this equation, V1 final, is going to be equal to m1 minus m2 over m1 plus m2 times v1 initial. Okay, and so what we're really going to try to find is v1 final. So this is already set up for us. But m1 minus m2 is going to be m minus 2m over m plus 2m times, sorry, times v1 initial. Well, m minus 2m is just going to be negative m over 3m, v1 initial. And so this becomes the m's cancel, so v1 final is equal to negative v1 initial over 3. Hey, look, that's what we had over here, v1 initial over 3. You're going to get the same one, but it's going to be negative. You're going to get negative 2.56 meters per second. So it's going to hit and it's going to bounce back at 2.56 meters per second. But they didn't ask that. They asked to what height does the mass rebound. And so it starts to bounce back. We want to know how high it goes up. Well then it becomes an energy equation there again. And now our initial energy is 1 half mv initial squared. And our final is going to be mgh and we want to solve this for h. The mass is canceled. And we get h is equal to v initial squared over 2g. Okay, so h is going to be equal to 7 point, I'm oh, sorry, negative 2.56 squared, so the negative doesn't really matter, over 2 times 9.8. And when you put that in, you're going to get 0.33 meters. This is how high it's going to go back up. And that's the answer to part B. All right, so this is part A, part B. All right, that's how you do those kind of problems.